Good morning, welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. I'm here with Roman Chernyshoff, VP of Healthcare and Life Sciences at Data Art EU, and creator of the Kid Pro app. Uh, hi, Roman. Can you provide a little bit of background and uh, a little bit of information about your career to date? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I studied in Saint Petersburg in Saint, Saint Petersburg State uh, Technical University, uh, and I studied robotics. Uh, but uh, even before that, I got interested in computers and IT and uh, I got really passionate about technology at that time. So I spent most of my time, you know, programming and, you know, playing with all kinds of uh, software and toys. And uh, that's how I got into IT. That's how I started. And then right after the university, I th there was a chain of... Uh, low-paid jobs at, in technology companies. Uh, then at some point I decided to start my own software business, which uh, lasted for about two years. And then that was uh, sort of my decision to move to uh, you know, full-time employment and build my career in a sort of enterprise world. Uh, in 2004, I joined DateArt uh, as a uh, software developer. Uh, by that time, I already had some experience in project management, in you know, uh, leading teams, and within a year, I switched to more of a project management role. And from that time, I was kind of building my career inside the company, uh, currently being uh, head of healthcare and life sciences practice in uh, data art. Right, can you tell me a little bit more about what data art do? Uh, we're a technology consulting company uh, providing uh, design and development services to technology companies in different uh, areas. Uh, my responsibility is healthcare and life sciences, but we also uh, work with financial companies, we also work in uh, online travel, uh, machine to machine and uh, some other areas as well. What was the, the thinking behind the creation of the Kid Pro app? So we had a conversation with uh, a clinical research organization that was struggling with uh, a common problem, basically. There is a class of software systems called uh, patient recorded, electronically patient recorded outcomes that uh, are aimed at recording you know, a patient journey through a clinical trial, basically during drug development, it's the last, last, last stage of uh, drug development process. And the problem that uh, they are facing is that it works, all those uh, electronic systems, they work well with adults because adults are disciplined, they are focused, they can uh, track their behavior, but it doesn't work uh, very well with kids because they are quite the opposite. They're unfocused and they're not disciplined and you have to engage them, you have to get them interested. And so the idea was to provide an alternative interface for kids to uh, ePro systems that would be engaging, that would uh, keep uh, kids motivated and interested in, in what they do. And so uh, this was the idea behind the pro. We sit down and we try to think what can we do to uh, solve this problem. And the result is this uh, application which is basically alternative interface that uh, engages kids, uh, provides them with uh, you know, all kinds of things that make them interested in the process through, the, through a game and rewards them with uh, you know stars and uh, things that uh, ultimately we can uh, develop this system even farther and make it uh, you know uh, a sort of social network for kids undergoing clinical trials so that they could share their uh, experiences they could share items they gain in the uh, in the application and make it uh, the big game, an interesting game. I tested this application on my son 
uh, who is uh, eight at the moment, and uh, it worked. It, it worked very well. He was uh, really interested at some point in playing with the character and yeah. you know buying stuff, uh, exchanging uh, his rewards for uh, pieces of cloth that uh, application offers. So yeah, that's that's basically the idea behind it. It's a, a attempt to solve a real problem through uh, sort of gameplay. Yeah. Did you think at any point of aiming it more for the, the parents or the or carers rather than the, the child itself, or was it was it always uh, the, the plan to to make it uh, usable, but just for? Yeah, the, the the plan was is to make it usable so that and uh, by, by kids so that they could report their experience uh, yeah. without intervention from uh, carers and carers are still there. Uh, they are overseeing that process, but uh, the main point was to get uh, kids themselves engaged in, engaged into the in, into this process. Um, I understand that there's there's no plans to, to push the app itself out into the, the marketplace. Can you can you explain the thing you that? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea and the main driver for us to develop this application was to uh, demonstrate what technology can do to solve uh, real world problems. Uh, in this case, the idea came, as I said, from a CRO organization that we had conversation with, and they uh, kind of described us what problem they are facing. And we tried to use our creativity and our experience and technology just to show them what uh, technology can be capable of and yeah. how it can solve the problem. So this is mostly a demonstrator. It's not uh, an application that we're going to push uh, on the market. We're not going to sell it. Uh, it it's a demonstrator and uh, hopefully uh, people can get will get interested in this application and maybe we can develop this de uh, this idea further in partnership yeah. with uh, someone who's who's interested in it. So it's very much a sort of a starting point yeah, to exactly. for future development if, uh, if, yeah, if people do buy into the idea and the yeah, concept. Yeah, absolutely. Right, okay. Uh, when, when, uh, when sort of creating the app itself, what, uh, what issues did you find around sort of security or, or data invulnerabilities that you had to overcome? Uh, not much really. Right. Uh, we've been working uh, in healthcare space, in the healthcare technology space for uh, probably more than 10 years already. So we're quite familiar with, uh, you know, security regulations, HIPAAs and, yeah. uh, you know, safe harbors of this world. So uh, developing this application, again, we were focusing on solving the problem, uh, not as because we never intended to have this particular application, you know, published uh, and used in uh, real world scenarios. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we always developing applications. We always remember about all kinds of regulations, and uh, it's really. Uh, part of our development process. So everything we do is kind of addressing issues around security and privacy. We just have to do that because otherwise we wouldn't be, you know, a good partner for companies working yeah, in this space. That's very true. Yeah. And um, sort of away from the to talk about the app itself, what um, what can you see uh, technology-wise? What kind of developments can you see in the future of IT specifically related to healthcare? Is there anything that you can sort of see? on the horizon or anything that would be good if a certain product or, or solution was developed? Uh, talking specifically about healthcare, uh, I think the IT overall is uh, the, the biggest trend is that it becomes more and more personal and yeah. less and less private. Right. And uh, in healthcare specifically, I think uh, we'll see a lot more applications for telemedicine in the nearest future. Uh, right now, I think uh, the only uh, reason we don't see telemedicine everywhere is that uh, uh, legal framework is just not mature enough to support that. Uh, but I think telemedicine will be kind of the main uh, driver of growth and main application of technology in, in the nearest future in healthcare. And then, uh, apart from that, I think uh, combination of gaming mm -hmm. and, and healthcare is another trend that can be very uh, visible. Yeah. 
Uh, but using it's cheaper up preach, isn't it? That, that's yeah, cool. using but uh, it, it also works uh, for adults. Uh, people just like playing games, yeah. and I think uh, healthcare technology will be leveraging that fact a lot. Uh, you know, promoting uh, healthy behaviors through you know gaming and gamification of um, applications. Um, I think those are probably the main two uh, trends that, uh, that I can see now. Okay. And looking back again to the, the start of your career, um, were there any particular role models or any, any if, or if not role models, was there a sort of a reason that you, that you wanted to get into the industry in the first place? I just, I just got very hooked with, you know, this whole programming thing. It's, it, it's really amazing when you can create worlds with your own hands and you can, uh, you know, change fundamental laws in, in, in those worlds. That's probably how I started. And I always like to uh, do things before, uh, you know, getting interested in IT, I was uh, very much into uh, scale models, uh, right. which require a lot of, you know, uh, attention and uh, to details and everything. So that's probably it. It, it was sort of destined for me to, to get into <laughs> programming because that's uh, it, 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 that all, all these qualities are very much uh, required there. It's kind of analytical mind and the attention to detail and the, the focus. Yeah, that uh, things of that nature. But uh, I, I don't remember any role models at that time. Uh, IT was still very young. It was beginning of uh, 90s and uh, the only probably prominent person uh, at that time in IT was Bill Gates. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, not, not, not probably the only prominent, but uh, the only public uh, person who you could see in media and everywhere. Uh, so there was no role model, there was more like interest in the subject. I, I was very much interested in, 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 in all the developments there and just followed the, the, the trend. I think that's where it got me <laughs> so far. <laughs> and can you, uh, can you give away anything for, the, for our audience about what you might be working on next? Uh, we have a lot of R&D projects going on uh, all the time uh, for two different reasons. First, uh, we want to, uh, to be visible as you know, every business. We want to uh, show the world what we are capable of. But another big reason is that uh, we need to develop our uh, own talent internally. And this is the, probably the best way to do that, just to uh, let people's creativity out, use that creativity to create uh, prototypes like this and uh, applications. The next, ap the next application that we're working on right now uh, is um, sort of analytical tool for uh, pharma marketing. Right. Uh, we're at the very early stage of planning and sketching the application, but when it's done, it will probably be able of uh, collecting data uh, about uh, you know, promotion of a certain medicine or drug or certain product on the market. Uh, using all available channels, including social networks and media and everything, and then compare uh, that data from from the real world with uh, events uh, that happen during product's life cycle. So it's not specific to pharma, to be honest. It can be used in, in any other industry. But, uh, you know, uh, overlaying uh, reaction over uh, you know specific events, you can see how market reacts to your proposal, to yeah. how market reacts to the product uh, from different uh, angles, and we think it might be a very interesting idea to have it on the one screen. Like, okay, here we uh, did launch, and here we published an article, and that, and here is how our sales went up here, and here is the response that we got here, and uh, if we uh, complement that with um, sentiment analysis. So 
not just counting number of uh, mentions, but also quality of those mentions, you know, whether it was a positive mentioning or was it uh, in, in a negative context. Uh, it, it can provide even more value to, uh, to marketing people in, in, the, in the pharma industry or in any other in industry for that matter. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds like a wide range of uses. Yeah, it, it, it definitely can have a wide range of uses. And by doing that, we're actually employing a wide range of uh, technologies uh, from you know, natural language processing to big data analysis and uh, all those buzzwords, they yeah. will be there. <laughs> Mixed bag of buzzwords. Yeah. Well, I think that's the end of my questions. So uh, thank you very much for your time today, Ruben. Uh, thank you. Cheers.